Uh, my name is Gabriel Lebec. I am an instructor here at Full Stack Academy. Yeah, well, most of my uh, career following uh, college was in healthcare and medicine. I did a lot of research. Uh, I worked in a genomics lab. I worked um, for an ophthalmology practice, glaucoma. Uh, and I was thinking about a master's in physiology, um, but I really wasn't very happy with that. And I've always enjoyed coding. So actually, I came to Full Stack as a student in 2014. Uh, full Stack teaches full stack web applications development, specifically in JavaScript. So we use JavaScript in the back end and the front end. Personally, my big three uh, are a combination of what I call functional composition, uh, higher order functions, and prototypal inheritance. Uh, functional composition literally means combining functions, um, but it refers a little bit more specifically to a suite of concepts. Uh, one is that your code should be broken up into lots of very small functions, each of which does one thing well, and which doesn't rely on anything else in the environment. Um, so these are very simple tasks that you put some input into and you get some output and then you can start stringing those along. So the output from one function can become the input into another function. Functional composition is all about being able to write functions which chain together. And learning that as, a, uh, as an approach tends to make your code easier to reason about. This is a little bit more complicated. It's a little bit harder for many students to understand but it's a hallmark of uh, many functional programming languages, of which JavaScript is one. Higher order functions are all about functions which can actually return other functions as output or take other functions as input. That's sometimes difficult, I think, for beginners to understand on an abstract level. Um, so an example um, that we might do concretely uh, is a function, uh, if we had a simple function that simply adds one to a number, we might name that add one. It can take in any number like n and return n plus one. So it takes in five, return six. Um, we might want to uh, keep track of how many times somebody has used that function. Well, that's a weird thing to do normally, um, but it actually comes up a lot in programming and what we call spies and testing. Uh, an example of how we might do that is writing what we call a higher order function. We might write a function called spy, which takes in the add one function and returns a spy version of add one. Now when we return this new function that was spit out by the spy function, every time we call it, it keeps track of itself. And we can ask it later, how many times were you called? And it'll tell us, I was called five times, or 10 times, or 12 times. The third thing, prototypal inheritance, uh, is very specific to JavaScript. Some other languages might have it, but I don't know if that's the case. Uh, in many classical languages, if somebody comes to a programming bootcamp with knowledge of Java or C++ um, or other object-oriented languages, they may be aware of the concept of classes. And the idea of a class is you have a blueprint for some kind of thing, some thing that might be useful in your code. And from that blueprint, you can spawn multiple instances, which all share the qualities of that blueprint. Prototypal inheritance that JavaScript has looks a lot like the same kind of thing. You can make lots of objects, and those objects can all share a prototype. And so if the prototype has a method, a function, um, like draw to the screen, each one of those objects can now draw to the screen. So at first glance, it looks very similar. But what I think beginners really need to understand properly about prototypal inheritance instead of class-based inheritance is that in classes, the instances are copies of the blueprint but then they're totally divorced from the blueprint. Whereas in prototypal inheritance, these new objects, they're just pointing back to the prototype object. In fact, the object, the prototype itself is another kind of object. 
So in prototypal inheritance, it's not that each object now has a draw to the screen function, it's that they all share one draw to the screen function. And that central concept is one of the things that makes JavaScript both different from other languages, but also able to mimic a lot of object-oriented languages. Um, as to resources that I think can help people learn this, uh, there's a, a number of really great things out there that are, some of which are free, some of which are paid. Um, our organization, Full Stack Academy, has some preparatory courses, JavaScript 101, um, bootcamp prep, uh, and they have varying price levels and, and scopes attached to them. Uh, and I think that obviously those are tailored toward people trying to enter into an intensive program like Full Stacks. As to free online materials, uh, I'm a really big fan of this uh, guy named Matthias, who on YouTube has a channel called Fun Fun Function. And he does a great job of breaking down, especially for beginner JavaScripters, um, some of these concepts that I've talked about. Uh, finally, I think that uh, uh, there are a lot of many great free online resources, but Code School and Team Treehouse have done an excellent job in creating a lot of lessons that, um, some of which are free and, and can be done online.